is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness, and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose. Want to make an impact in the kingdom? Ready to tap into your future? Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell, www.houseofreconciliation.org. All right, we're ready. All right, thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. We are here at the Greenville campus at 1427 Sweetie Lawrence Road. Thank all of those that are joining us from the Greenwood campus at 210 Pansy Road. And to all of our virtual campus members, we thank God for you and thank you for the opportunity to share with you. As well as those that are international and global, we do appreciate all of your insight, your thoughts, and everything that you have done for the ministry. We're not going to hold you. We are talking about finances. Our scripture tonight, we're going to overlook during the church anthem, comes out of Proverbs 21 and 5 in the English Standard Version. It says, the plan of the diligent leads surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes only to poverty. And so I was just having a brief conversation off camera, uh, literally about some people or just in general, people who are handling their seed, their career, their finances through their emotions. Emotions get you what you want, but not what you need. So what we want to do is we're going to break that down. And this is why I wrote this piece. I think the topic tonight that they share with you online is your life is asking for a plan, please. Why do you think that is so? Your life. Your life know more about you than you know about yourself. Because we see ourselves in pretty much either a day-to-day or sometime a week-to-week window. Your life sees your beginning, your middle, and your ending. And your life says, If you keep doing what you're doing now, we will not have anything to take care of us as we get older. Because there are some insecurities with our jobs. We may have a job, may have a degree, but many people do not understand this. Most of the things we have in life has a life cycle. I'll give you a quick example. Remember when CDs were hot? How many of you now listen to CDs in your car? They even build some cars with the request of not having any CD or DVD player. How many of you still have VHSs? At one point, that was the only, somebody just had a flashback. At one point, that was the only thing to have. So where you are relevant now in your emotions, In the future, what you have and yourself may not be relevant. I had an opportunity to talk to a gentleman on yesterday evening, and he was sharing with me that he was planning to go back to work. But the problem was he had some health issues. He just took a job. And now the day that he was supposed to go back, his companion had health issues. See, we don't see the stagnation of the situations that are always are going to appear in life. Here is what the great Dean Winter said. People don't plan to fail. They just fail to plan. And anytime your emotions is running your life and running your money, it normally leaves you in not so a good spot. And let me give you some things that will help you. I'm going to ask you, what are you drawing from? Because most people that this will be most relevant to are those that are probably in their early 20s up into maybe mm, 48, 52, kind of 55. That's kind of a a break off because if you don't have it sown by then, then it's going to be hard to plant. So here's what I'm saying. What are you drawing from? I have a meeting next week with uh, a person who wants to do all these things. And so they think that the more I invest, the more I'll make. 
That's a theory, not a reality. What do you mean? People, not everybody, but a lot of people like to be in Warren Buffett shoes and a lot of these uh, owners of Amazon and all of that. But here's what they don't know. They invest in the millions. The average person does not have enough income to go out and buy 10,000 shares of Apple stock. So then you will never be in the place of that person. Now, this is from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett used the text and said this. He can buy a million shares and over a span of time make a, mil a billion dollars. How many of us can go buy a million shares? Here is what logic says. Logic says that those type of investments over the life cycle will in some time yield you an average from 7 to 10 percent and there's a few extravagant ones that will let you receive 12 to 15 percent but the flip side of that when you study corporate finances corporations get people to pay their bills and only pay them a fraction of the percentage of the profit they made so if you can get enough people to pay your bills now the money that you're making so I'm going to meet with someone to say, you're trying to reach too high and you've not established a blueprint. Because here's the thing. Now, this is going to be a little stank. People don't use their money to invest. They use the money you spend to invest. I'm going to have to let that one sink in. So when you invest, you spend your money. And many of us don't have that much money that we can miss for a long period of time. Now, do I need to say it again? Because I, 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 okay. People who really invest, they don't invest their money. They invest the money that they have earned from you. They put their money in a trust. And when you invest, you have to make cuts somewhere. <laughs> yeah, nobody. Because see, the question I have, your life is asking for a plan. Please. I'm going to ask you, number one, if you're a writer, what are you drawing from? Because pensions are fading out and 401ks are also getting ready to line up. So when you get these chunks of money, and if you don't put them somewhere, and you don't know where to put them, because most people don't want to pay nobody, but everybody want to hear how to make money. Does that? Yeah, what did they say? Yeah, yeah, what you say? Oh, no, I don't want to pay nobody. But I want, so you want to go buy something to make all the profit, but you want somebody to leak information so you can eat and they can't eat. All right, what are you drawing from? Anybody have an answer? I can give you two things, and most people only have one. You're either on the, f you're on the uh, front or the back. And here's the thing. You don't realize the two go together. A as we were having a conversation, there was a dialogue that, you know, some people are, are having issues with A, B, and C, and this, that, and the other. And see, here's the part. You got one part of your life, but there's another part of you. And as long as that other part is not in sync with God, you get all the money in the world. You can even buy a team. And because of who you are and how you talk, now you're probably going to have to sell. Y'all know, y'all know. And so then they, they behind the scenes have a conversation with you, and then you have to come out and say, well, I think I'm going to go ahead and, and, and sell. Yeah, no, no. Everybody start pulling their money away from you. So what are you drawing from? Let me give you an answer real quick. 
two things you should have that are guaranteed. One, your innate inheritance. That means you have the competency to go to school or start a business or have a skill. The other part that many people are still fighting and rejecting. You need to go read Brother Nicodemus. There would be no need for the second half if you could walk in balance in the first half. Even the wealthiest man in our time in, in history was Abraham. Uh, he had to have spiritual guidance, and he had to have a covenant with God because prior to the covenant, his name was Abram. And when he went into a covenant with God, he became Abraham. Do your research. See, you're trying to get a home run without having a bat. Do I know? Tell me about it. <laughs> it's called, what are the four things? Illusions, imagination, and hypothetical. I know, I, I know. Uh, someone said something to me, and I, I don't mean any disrespect. But someone said to me, I said, so how am I going to get somebody to do something when they don't have what I need to do it? That's the best way I can say it without getting in trouble. So how are you going to hit and hit a home run and have no tools to swing with? So you're, you are accomplished in one area of your life and you're spiritually anorexic in the other. And, and then the, the sad part about it is the four things that work against you. What are they? Illusion, imagination, hallucination, because it just tells you you can do it. I can dream all day. I can dream all day about being six foot six. And every time I stand up, I'm going to be 5'10". I can change it on my license. I'm six foot six. But every day I stand up, I'm 5'10". Don't y'all look at me like that. People won't deal with reality. Number two, here is where most people are. They are stuck in what was. And what was becomes a coddling point, it becomes a crutch, it becomes fear, it becomes a comfort zone, and it tells you you are safe and you don't need to add anything else to you. Y'all agree with that? Here's the problem. Number three is what you've heard. What does that mean? You work for mama, you work for daddy, my daddy retired. Listen, let me give y'all something you all may have never heard of. They freeze assets. There were people that worked with me uh, at uh, the nation's, well, the world's number one bottling company, and they were right at retirement. And so the franchisees froze their pensions, which means they didn't draw any interest, and they couldn't touch it, and they froze it for 20 years. You don't believe me? Ask some of our service trucks now how they were manipulated out of their pension. I'm not going to call it the names because we need everybody's sponsorship. But there are those that are still trying to figure out how did they lose $160,000 and $180,000 because the company changed the rules. And they have staffs of attorneys that can write and manipulate things. So what you heard it's not always the facts. Here is what everybody need, number four. A statistical financial database. You bring that knowledge in. You add it to the spiritual. And that you can come up with a master plan. As Dean Winter said, people don't fail the plan. They don't plan to fail. They just fail the plan. I'm going to give you something, and this is going to be a little thick. Listening and having the capabilities to learn is what leads to understanding. Learning is just the first step to understanding. Here is what I've learned. When people argue with you so much, they are very untrusting. And they're very fearful. 
they don't trust and they're fearful of moving. They're in what we call a fractured comfort zone. And literally what they're saying to you is they don't have a plan, but they don't trust your plan. Because listen, listening is having a capability to learn is what understanding is. Learning is just the first step to understanding. Here is the key. What makes people fearful and what makes them not want to trust and believe that you're telling the truth is one simple sentence. Without knowledge, understanding is impossible. Everything in your life, the Bible says, he that believeth. Many people don't have any faith. They don't think they can turn their life around. They think they always have to work for someone. They always think because of their ethnicity, I will always be on the bottom. I will always be this. They don't think upwards. I'll say it again. Without knowledge. This is why the Bible talks about study. And the Bible talks about rightly dividing the word of truth. Why would you be afraid of taking the next level in God? Why? Why? Because you got trust issues. And the only truth you want to believe is your truth. Here is what it says. By having knowledge doesn't necessarily and doesn't necessarily lead to understanding, which is of a greater narrative. Because when God opened Nicodemus' mind, that you cannot go back in because to Jesus, he sound foolish. Here you are, six foot, all this stuff, and you think you can just go back in your mother's womb and come out and be a different person? You think you can live your life without God? I just want you to call me when you wake up on the other side and wish for something greater. You know why? Many people are afraid to trust and believe. They believe their own mind. What does the Bible say? Lean not. Oh, say it like you mean it. Lean not. Oh, won't you tell me nothing? Lean not to thy own understanding. Y'all know the rest of it? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah what, what? Oh, he can't direct my, I, I know where I'm going. Really? That's why you handle your finances with your emotions. And that's why you trap by paycheck to paycheck. That's why every time you turn around, something's on sale. And you got to have this to impress your friends. And you got to have the status because this emblem gives you a status. How does that emblem help you in the financial crunch? Because at one point, in about two years ago, two and a half years ago, it didn't matter what you was driving. There was nowhere to go eat. Hello? So then the Bible says, all the ways of a man are good the Bible says lean not to thy own understanding but what mm -hmm. y'all need to look that one up because I know somebody got a bone in their throat I got it I don't need Jesus but having knowledge doesn't necessarily lead to understanding of a greater narrative which is the point of gathering new information. If it's not qualified, it's not facts, why are you even listening to it? You have it? Y'all have that scripture? Proverbs 3 and 5? Oh, now she want to add like, now the first one that won't use it is the first one talking about, it's Proverbs 3 and 5. You, you know the scripture, but do you live the scripture? Okay, see, I appreciate the honesty. <laughs>
Both of them. Both of them, because I only have five minutes. Kids got to go to school. I'm going to read the scripture for you again, Proverbs 21 and 5, the plans of the diligent. See, you make your own plans, but you don't control your own breath. Yes. Old folk, I understand what old folk used to say, if it's the will of the Lord, like, why you can't do it? You might not have the breast, the breath to go over there. You have it? Okay. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Now hold up right there. Number one, I want you to realize part of your issue with your money is you have a trust issue. All right? And lean not unto thine own understanding. That goes back up. What are you drawing from? What was? What you heard? Many people do not have the golden egg. What does that mean? They don't have the guidance from God. They just have. And see, here's the thing. It's like the lottery. A lot of people play the lottery, but here's what they don't understand. Every time someone buys a ticket, your chances of winning goes down, decreases. Every time you think you know where you're going, your chances of being exactly right goes listen to what the bible said come on verse 6 says in all thy ways oh no everybody say no yeah. stay out the way jesus <laughs> bad bad jesus you don't know what you're doing let me do this because my friend said my mind told me i know what my mama did i know what my daddy did look here jesus you just take care of the elderly people I got this right here, right here, right here. Acknowledge him. I don't want to acknowledge him. Because I want to be God. And he shall direct thy path. That's the problem. I'm driving Jesus. You just get everybody else out of my way. Oh, I wish you had the picture of the cliff with the car. With the person, I know I, I probably didn't give you all that one. I don't know if you have it. You got it? I want you to put that one up. That's you. That's, that's us right there. That's us. We, we got to, yeah, you got it on, you got it up there? Yeah, see, see many of y'all want to just do, you don't want no, you don't want Jesus to help you, and there you go. There you go. Just, there you go right there. I, I think that right there, that right there, right there, right there, right, right there. <laughs> and, and while you all are looking at this, yes, yes, hands up. And now you want to reach up to heaven. Get me, Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, can I, I need you now, Jesus. Come get, come get her, brother Jesus. They say we look like Jesus. Come get me. Let me give you this and leave that up. Your imagination and your image are killing your finances. Your financial situation will always be trapped by your mind. Here's what I'm going to close with. As you see, this is how we do. We don't want God to have nothing to do with what we're doing when we're doing it. And here's the part. You didn't create you. And you don't know when your breath will be called back. So I would say you taking a mighty, 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 mighty risk there, child. Because here's what I'm going to say. The whole purpose of sharing this with you and finances, and we're going to go a little deeper uh, on Sunday, is to get you and I to put a development, put our development ahead of winning. I'm going to say this again. You have to put development ahead of winning. I see you all frowned up over there. Let me explain to you why. When you have someone who have just talent, that's not enough to win. 
ask some of the best baseball teams and some of the best basketball teams and football teams to look great on paper. And then when they got on the field, they couldn't do it. Here's how you do it. Winning will always be sustained by long term with the proper development. If you want to win long term, you're going to have to fix that other broken side. Because though you gain money, you don't have the discipline to handle money. And you don't have the vision to know where to put money. Because generally when you put money into things, you've got to pay so many fees that by the time your little nickels get up there to make something, you're making 1% when somebody else making 35. Because the reason your visions and your dreams are held up right now is because literally, my brothers and sisters, you are out of balance with God. So what I look for you to do is to be with me on Sunday morning so we can get it right. God bless you. I'll see you soon.